So today we are looking at lesson 3-7, and it's all about graphing radical functions. So just a few details before we get started. A radical function is any function that can be written in the form of this. We're going to talk about all these parts here as we go through and look at various graphs. And then we're going to put it all here in a minute when we're done. So for even values, whoops, that would be totally the wrong pin. So for even values of n, the domain of a radical function is the real numbers where x has to be greater than or equal to um, 0. So for instance, if you have the square root of 4, so you can take the square root of 4 because it's a positive number, which is 2. The square root of 1 is 1, the square root of 0 is 0, but the square root of negative 1 is impossible. So the smallest number um, for the square root of a function, and that's just the parent function, and remember we're going to talk about today that it can move up, down, right, or left, but if we're just graphing y equals the square root of x, the um, domain has to be x values greater than or equal to 0. So this function is also known as the square root function. All right, so these are just some examples of types of functions, square root functions that we're going to graph. So you could have f of x, which remember means y, equals the square root of x minus 2 or f of x is equal to 2 times the square root of x minus 3 plus 1. So this one right here follows this form right here where you have something in front of the radical, you have something underneath the radical being subtracted, it could also be added, and something outside the radical that's being added, it could also be subtracted. So, you already heard me talk about the parent function. So, the basic plane square root function would be y equals the square root of x. Now, we can graph things other than a square root function. We can graph any kind of radical function. So, that the parent function for any radical function would be the nth root of x. Then if our graph is reflected over the x-axis, which means that we're taking y values and making them negative, or we're taking negative y values and making them positive, the only way for that to happen is for there to be a negative in front of the function. And the function in this case is the square root. Or if it's just a radical function, your negative would be in front of whatever root we're taking of x. Now we can have a graph that stretches or shrinks. For graph to stretch or shrink, that comes from this number in front of the radical. So if the number in front of the radical is greater than 1, it's going to be a stretch. If the number in front of the radical is between 0 and 1, like a fraction like 1 half, 2 thirds, 5 six, it's going to be a shrink. Now stretch means that we're going to take a graph and we're going to stretch it. I can't show it both ways. We're going to stretch it like silly putty up and down. So you just pull it and it, the graph is going to actually get closer to the y-axis. And it's going to be, I can kind of say it's equivalent to a steeper sloped graph. Although we're graphing a curve today. And then if I shrink a graph, I'm pushing it down, pushing it down and it's going to get closer to the x-axis, so it's going to get squished, and it's going to become a shallower sloped graph. Now, notice that we haven't talked about a being negative. If there's a negative in front of a that has nothing to do with the stretch or shrink, that has everything to do with a reflection. So if the negative, the negative belongs to the reflection, and then the number itself will be a stretch or a shrink. So that would look like y equals that's my equals a square root of x or y equals a 
nth root of x. And then a translation, a horizontal translation occurs from h. So h is being added or subtracted to x, and then that means that um, if I'm changing my value of x, I'm going to be moving my graph from left to right. So if h is if h is positive, positive h, it's actually going to make a left movement. If you have a negative h, it's going to make a right movement. So it's just the opposite of what you think it should be. Whereas, and I'm going to prove this to you as we graph here in a minute, whereas a vertical uh, movement for k, so if you add something outside the function, that's going to move the graph up or move the graph down. And that's exactly what you think it would be. So a negative k, uh, k is going to be a down movement, and a positive k is going to be an up movement. So this would look like y equals the absolute value of x minus h, but plus k. And it could be a minus k, or it could be a plus h. That's just generally how it's written. Or y equals the nth root of x minus h. And then plus k. All right, so let's see how this works. So the first thing that I'm going to do before I graph y equals the absolute value of x plus 2, I'm going to graph the parent function. And I'm only going to graph the parent function this one time in full. After this, I'm just going to graph the points. But the parent function is y equals the square root of x because we're dealing with a square root. So this is parent function. All right, so I need to choose values for x that I can take the square root of. So as I talked about previously, I can't take the square root of a negative value. So the smallest non-negative number is 0, and 0 is a perfect square. So I'm going to start with 0. The square root of 0 is 0. The next number after 0 is 1. So if I put 1 in here, I'm going to put 1 here for x. So if I put 1 in here, the square root of 1 is 1, so that's my y value. The next number after 1 is 2. 2 is not a perfect square, so I'm not going to put it under here. The next number after 2 is 3. 3 is not a perfect square. The next number is 4. 4 is a perfect square, so I'm going to use 4. And if I put 4 here, the square root of 4 is 2. The next perfect square after 4 is not until 9. And as you can see, I'm not going to be able to fit 9 on my graph. So these are the only three points I'm going to be able to fit. And so here we go. 0, 0, 1, 1, and then 4, 2. And if I connect those points, I have a curve that looks like that. So that's the graph of the parent function, y equals square root of x. Then we have this function here, which is either going to move up, down, right, or left, reflect over the x-axis, or stretch or shrink. So based upon some things that we already talked about, the only thing that's happening here that's different from the parent function is this plus 2. This is outside the function, so it means it's affecting the y. Since it's outside the function and it's positive, it is going to move this graph up 2. So every ordered pair here is going to be moving up 2, up 2 up to. So my movement is up to. So I'm going to use my same x values because this is no different than this. So I'm going to use these x values. 0, 1, and 4. So if I put 0 into here, the square root of 0 is 0, plus 2 is 2. If I put 1 into the function, square root of 1 is 1, 
plus 2 is 3. If I put 4 into the function, the square root of 4 is 2, plus 2 is 4. All right, so I'm going to graph those points. 0, 2, see how that point moved up to? 1, 3, and 4, 4. And so if I connect those points, there we have the new function. So as you can see, this is the original parent function. This is the new function with the plus 2 on the outside of the function. This point moved up 2. This point moved up 2. This point moved up 2. So I really didn't need the table of values if I know what my parent function is. So anytime I have up, down, right, left movement, I don't really have to use a table of values. I can just plot the parent function and move those points the direction that I'm seeing here. In addition, let's talk quickly about domain and range. So the domain here, well, the domain here for this one, the smallest leftmost value I have is zero. So my domain for the parent function is going to include zero, so I have a bracket, and then it's going to go infinitely to the right, so I have positive infinity. And then my range, my lowest value, is 0 also. So I have a 0, and it goes up infinitely and to the right, so my range looks identical to my domain. Now, how does this affect it when um, I move the graph up too? So for my domain, I still have a smallest x value of 0 to positive infinity because it's going to the right. But look at my y value. My smallest y value starts at 2 this time, not 0. So I go from 2 to positive infinity. So let me try to make these a little bit bigger. Okay. And straighter. All right. So for example two, I want you just to look at for two, three, and four, I want you to look and decide is it moving up, down, right, or left? So what do you think here? Outside the function of minus three, we are going to be moving down three. And I'll let you use D for down, U for up. L for left and R for right. So I really don't need to do a table of values. I can just graph the parent function that we used previously that had the points of 0, 0, 1, 1, and 4, 2. Those are the same parent functions, y equals the square root of x, that we got before. I'm not even going to connect them this time. All I'm going to do is move each of these points down 3, every single one of them down 3. and then connect, and that's it. So these ones are pretty quick. Now if you wanted to use the table of values, feel free, be my guest. Um, because there's no right or left movement, you would still use the same values for x as we used for the parent function, 0, 1, and 4. So if you plug these into the table of values, square root of 0 is 0, minus 3 is negative 3. And you can see that point right here, 0, negative 3. Now plug 1 into here. Square root of 1 is 1. Minus 3 is negative 2. And you can see that point right here, 1, negative 2. And then the last point, plug 4 into here. Square root of 4 is 2. Minus 3 is a negative 1. And you can see that point 4, negative 1 here. All right, so this one, this time for both of these, we have uh, 3 being subtracted inside the function or 2 being subtracted inside the function. So if it's inside the function, it's affecting x, and the x movement is right or left. 
and that x movement is just the opposite of what you think it would be. So if it's a minus 3, we're not moving left 3, we're actually moving right 3, which I'll prove to you in a minute. If down here in this example, if I have a plus 2, I'm not moving right 2, I'm moving left 2. So I'm going to start with my parent function. So this is the last one I'm going to do where it's easy with the table of values because I don't really need the table of values. However, since I am moving right 3, I can't put 0 in for x like I put up here. I can't put 0, 1, 0, or 1 in because what's 0 minus 3? It's negative 3, and you can't take the square root of negative 3. All right, so what do I put in? Because the smallest value that this can come out to be is zero. So if you look at the movement that you know is gonna happen, right three, you can take this parent function and move it right one, two, three. So I'm gonna move that right three. And that tells me what my first x value should be, which is a positive three. So all I did was move it one, two, three. So that means my first x value should be a positive three and three minus three is zero, which is that first x value that we had for that parent function. So let's use that. So I'm gonna put in a three. So then three minus three is zero, square root of zero is zero. And notice how that this first point translated right three to three zero. Now I'll bet you this point is gonna translate one, two, three to four, one. So the next number after three is four. If I put four in here, four minus three is one, and one is a perfect square that I can take a square root of. So I do wanna put four in here. So four minus three is one, square root of one is one, and lo and behold, didn't I say it was gonna turn out to be positive four, positive one, which all that did was move this point one, two, three to the right, right three. So then the next number after four is five. Well, five minus three is two. That's not a perfect square. Next number after five is six. Six minus three is three, no. Next number is seven. Seven minus three is four. That will work. So seven, oops. There we go. So seven minus three is four. Square root of four is two. So I'm gonna plot the point seven, two. And that is our translated function. And as you can see, it got translated right three, right three, right three. The shape has not changed, it just moved. So now what I want you to do is pause the video and I want you to graph uh, the next one on your own, number four. Okay, so hopefully you pause the video and graph this on your own. The parent function is zero, zero, one, one, and four, two. And then if I am translating left two, each of these points are gonna go to the left two, left two, left two. And so that's as quick as it should be. So if I go left two, I'm right here left two is here, and left two is here. That's it. Now you could throw it into your ordered pairs if you want. The smallest x value that you could choose, which would make this zero, is gonna be left, or if we originally chose zero for our first x, then two left of zero is negative two. And look what happens, negative two plus two is zero. So you could have put in zero, plugged it in, and you would have gotten, oops, I don't know why I just put zero. All of that is completely wrong. Let's try that again. We plugged in negative two. So we put a negative two here plus two, which was zero, square root of zero is zero. That's much better. Then from there, the next number that you should plug in would be a negative one. 
because negative 1 plus 2 is our next perfect square of 1, which the square root of that is 1. And then the next perfect square that we want is 4. So to get 4, we should plug in 2, because 2 plus 2 is 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. Okay, so now we're getting into something a little bit more complicated. This time we have something in front of the radical and something being subtracted from the outside, outside the function, and something inside the function. So we have one, two, three transformations going on. So what I want you to do is I want you to write down what you think is happening with all three of these transformations. So pause the video. Okay, so the two is causing a vertical stretch. So I'm, not, I'm just gonna insist that you say a stretch, but it is a vertical stretch. A stretch of two. And then the three inside the function, the plus three is the opposite of what you think is gonna happen because it's affecting x and the x direction is right left. This is the opposite, so it's not going right, it's going left three. And then this is happening outside the function. Outside the function affects y, so it's going to go in an up or a down motion. And this is exactly what you think it is, so it will be down 1. So then um, because of this stretch, so because of this stretch here, we're not going to be able to just plot the parent function, which I am going to plot the parent function. 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2. So that's our parent function. I can't just plot that parent function and move these ordered pairs left 3 down 1 because I have this stretch going on. So the only way to really get a good value, pardon me for yawning, it's Friday at the end of the day, um, is to plug it into this function right here. So how do I figure out what x I'm going to put in here? The easiest way is to look at your right or left movement because that's the direction of x. So because it's left 3, if I move all of these 3, so I'm just going to put some interim dots here in green. There's the first dot moved 3. So my first x is going to be negative 3. And I'm going to move the second dot left 3. So my next x is going to be negative 2. And my last dot would give me a, an x of 1. So again, I moved this dot left 3, which gives me an x value of negative 3, which is what I'm starting with here. This dot I moved left 3, which gives me this x value of negative 2, which I put here. And this dot moved 1, 2, 3 which gives me an x value of 1, which I put here. So now all I have to do is run these three things through this formula. So here we go. All right, so I'm going to plug in the negative 3, oops, the negative 2, and the positive 1. So negative 3 plus 3 is 0. Square root of 0 is 0. Times 2 is 0. Minus 1 is negative 1. Then negative 2 plus 3 is positive 1, square root is 1, times 2 is 2, minus 1 is 1. 1 plus 3 is 4, square root of 4 is 2, times 2 is 4, minus 1 is 3. So I'm going to plot those ordered pairs, so negative 3, negative 1, negative 2, positive 1, Remember, we have a stretch going on here. 
So the shape of the graph is going to change. And then 1, 3. So now I'm going to connect those points. And as you can see, this is a much steeper slope than what this slope was here. So if you connect that, you'll see that that's a much steeper slope. So let's just talk about domain and range when it comes to this particular graph. So my leftmost domain value is right here at negative 3. And then it goes to the right infinitely. So my domain is negative 3 to positive infinity. Then my smallest range value goes all the way up to here, right here, at negative 1. So that's my lowest range value, and then it goes up infinitely. So my range is going to be from negative 1 to positive infinity. All right, so what I would like you to do is try to graph this one here on your own. Bear in mind that this negative Let's write out what our transformations are going to be. So the negative means you have a reflection. Over the x-axis. So this means a reflection. The one-half means we have a shrink of one-half. And then we have some up, down, right, left movement. So inside the function, I have a minus 1. So it's the opposite of what I think it should be. So instead of left 1, it is a right 1. And then finally, we have outside the function a plus 4. So it's exactly what you think. So that's going to be up 4. OK, so pause the video, and I want you to try to determine what x values are you going to choose first and so just as a reminder to choose your x values use your right movements so look at your parent function and move that right one and those are your x values that you're going to use all right so pause the function or pause the video okay so the parent function is and let me move this graph over let me move this graph over a smidge. All right, so the parent function would be graphed here. Then I am going to move everything just left, I'm sorry, right one. I just want to move everything right one. Whoops, I want a different color though. And I'm only moving everything right one so that I can see where the x value is. So this is right 1, right 1, and then right 1. So my x values that I'm going to use are going to be positive 1, positive 2, and positive 5. Because I'm just, I, all I did was move each of these right 1, so that's a x value of 1, right 1, x value of 2, right one, x value of five. So I didn't do any of the other movements, I just moved it there so I could figure out what I'm gonna put here. And so now I'm plugging it into the function. And actually, I'm gonna move this up over here. Okay, that way I have some room. All right, so I'm going to put in a 1, a 2, and a 5. So 1 minus 1 is 0. Square root of 0 is 0. Times a half 
is still 0 plus 4. So I've got a 4. Then 2 minus 1 is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. Times negative a half is negative a half. Plus 4 is 3 and 1 half. 5 minus 1 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. 2 times negative a half is negative 2. Plus 4 is 2. So let's go ahead and plot those points. So I have 1, 4, and 2, 3 and a half, and then 5, 2. So this line is a bit shallower than its parent function, and you're like, well, it's going in the wrong direction because it was reflected. So remember, this graph reflected goes this way. So if you reflect it over the x-axis, it went from here. It's going to look like this. So then this kind of curve moved up 4 and to the right 1. So from like if I just took this point and reflected it down here, I would go right 4, up 1, but we also had this shrink going on too, so it affects everything. So it's just easier if you do it in the table of values. Okay, so we are skipping this word problem. We're not going to look at that one. And then let's move on to our last page of graphs, and let's look at cubic or cube roots. So here we have cube roots. Make this a little bigger. Okay, so let's graph the parent function of a cube root first. Because it's going to look different than y equals square root of x. So our parent function is y equals cube root of x. Now this time I want to find my smallest cube root. Well, because it's an odd function, I can take the cube root of a negative number. So I don't have to start at zero. I can actually choose any negative number. My domain is not restricted on an odd root function. On an even root function, your domain is restricted. But remember, if I went all the way over here to negative 8, which is over here, the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. And then, so I am going to start there because we don't have that many perfect cubes that are going to fit on this graph. So I'm going to put negative 8 underneath the radical here, the cube root of negative 8, that's negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, is negative 2. So you plot that point. It's going to look like right about there. Then the next perfect cube going in this direction is not 7, not 6, not 5, not 4, not 3, not 2, but negative 1. So if you put negative 1 in underneath this root, the cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. So I'm going to plot the point negative 1, negative 1. Then the next perfect cube going in this direction is 0. So 0. The cube root of 0 is 0, so I'm plotting a point at 0, 0. Next cube root is 1. Cube root of 1 is 1. And finally, I have 8. Cube root of 8 is 2. And I can't fit that one on here. So the graph actually looks like an S function. Whoops, I went way high. It's really not that high. I got a little carried away. Had it, it looks something like this. There we go, that's much better. Okay, so it looks like this sideways S. So, what is happening in the one we actually have to graph? So, it doesn't matter that it's a cube root. Uh, 2 is being subtracted inside the function, so the movement is the opposite of what you think it is. So, we are going to go right 2. So, I'm just going to take each one, I'm not even using this table of values. 
I don't need it. I'm going to take each one of these points and I'm just going to move it right to, right to, right to, right to. So here we go. Right to would put me right here. And then right to would be here, here, and here. And then connect those. Notice that the, whoops, let's unconnect that. That looks terrible. Try that again. So as you can see, the shape of the graph is not changing. It just moved to the right too. So, and you can do that with any of your functions. Now, this particular example, none, not, not much seems to be in the right spot. So you've got this one minus one half. We have to put it in its standard form in order to see what all the transformations are. So this one needs to come out, out over here and be added at the end. The negative is your reflection. This is your shrink. This is your movement left. And this plus one is going to be your up movement. So we should be looking at it like this y equals negative one half cube root of x plus three and then plus one goes out here so our transformations would be a reflection because of that negative so reflection let's just do reflect over the x-axis And then we have a shrink of one half. So it's going to make a shallow or sloped line. Then we have movement of left three and up one. <clears throat> so our parent function of the cubic function was uh, negative eight, negative two, negative one, negative one, 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 zero, zero. I missed that one. And I can't do the last one. So those are our parent functions. So I'm going to use the left three to determine what my ordered pairs are or what my values for x are. So left of negative eight is going to be negative 11. And I'm, there's no way I'm going to fit that. So I'm not going to start with negative 11. But left of negative one, left three would be one, two, three, a negative four. So I'm going to start there. And then three left of zero is at negative three. And then three left of one is here at negative two. Now I think I can fit one more on there. So think about this one. If I were over here at 8, because we only can see 6, but if I were way over here more to the right at 8, 3 to the left of 8 is 5. So I can actually fit 5 on here as well. And so I'm just going to run that through the equation. Okay, so then let's put our values in. So I've got negative 4 in here, negative 3, negative 2, and 5. And I want to pay attention to my turning point, meaning when does the curve turn in the other direction because it goes here and then turns. This is my turning point. So the 0 got moved 1, 2, 3. So this negative 3 is my turning point. So I'm going to label it as TP. just to remind myself that's my turning point. All right, negative four plus three is negative one. Cube root of negative one is negative one times negative one half is one half plus one is one and a half. 
Okay, then negative three. So negative three plus three is zero, cube root is zero, times negative a half is zero, plus one is zero. I'm sorry, plus one is one. How about that? All right, so then negative two. Negative two plus three is one, cube root is one, times negative a half is negative a half, plus one is one half. Then five plus three is eight, cube root is two, two times negative a half is negative one, plus one is zero. So let's plot those ordered pairs. And we get, remember it's gonna be reflected, so this curve here, this curve here is gonna get reflected over the x-axis and it's gonna actually curve like this and it's gonna curve down. So let's see what that looks like. So negative four, positive one and a half. Negative three, positive one. That's our turning point. Negative two, positive a half. Five, zero. So, it's going to look like like that. All right, you do the last one on your own. Well, actually, you're going to need a lot of help on this one. I'll take that back. So, this particular one, I'll let you graph it on your own, but I'll get you into the form where you can graph it. So, this particular one is not in the form of which you can graph it. You've got something being multiplied to x, and we're definitely not moving at 32 to the left. So, what could we do? Underneath here, you can actually factor 8x plus 32. There's a GCF of 8. So, I'm going to factor it down below. So, I've got y equals the cube root of, if I factor an 8 out in front and divide each of those by 8, I get x plus 4 and then a minus 2. Now, you can take the cube root of 8 because it's been multiplied to something. So this is no different than taking the cube root of 8z. If you want to look at that as a z, you won't take the cube root of this because it's not a perfect cube, but this is the cube root of 8 is 2. I couldn't take the cube root of these because there's an addition sign outside of parentheses. So the cube root of 8 is 2. It's going to come out in front, and it's going to become a stretch. And then the x plus 4 stays underneath, and then minus 2. So this means a stretch of 2. So we have a stretch of 2. This means we are moving opposite of what you think it is, left 4. And this is the same as what you think it is. It's outside the function, so it's down 2. Now this left movement of 4 is going to affect the x values that I choose. The normal x values for a cubic function would be negative 8, negative 1, 0, 1, and 8. So left four of negative eight puts you at negative 12. So clearly we're not gonna be able to fit that in this graph. The next value would be negative one. So left four of that would put us at negative five. So that will fit. So I'm gonna start with negative five. And then four left of zero would be negative four. And then four left of one would put you at negative three. And then four left of eight would put you at four. So that one will actually fit on here. All right, so I'm just gonna run it through my graph or my equation here. I'm not going to write it in here because I don't have room, but I'm just going to run it through here. So I'm going to put negative 5 in here. So negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. 
cube root of negative 1 is negative 1, times 2 is negative 2, minus 4 is negative 4. Put negative 4 in. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. Yeah, negative 4 plus 4 is 0. Cube root is 0. Times 2 is 0. Minus 2 is negative 2. Next is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 4 is 1. Cube root is 1. Times 2 is 2. Minus 2 is 0. Last is 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. Cube root is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 2 is 2. So our parent function would have been here. All right, but our new function is going to be at negative 5, negative 4, negative 4, negative 2, negative 3, 0, and 4, 2. Now, it would be nice to know your turning point. So since our turning point is normally at 0 and we moved uh, left 4, the, the x value of negative 3, 0, this is going to be our turning point. So our TP is right here. So I'm going to end up getting a graph that looks like this. Wasn't that fun? So I hope you enjoy your homework. If you have any troubles, feel free to text, remind to text me. Have a great evening.